Hey, Mary Johnson is from Dundalk, uh, Catholic, went to school at St. Vincent's Mercy Convent on Dundalk. She came first in the town in the Leaving Cert and first in Ireland in Italian in the Leaving Cert. She went to Trinity, got a degree in Russian and French. She then went to study marketing at night in the College of Commerce in Ralph Mines, did the four-year course in two years. She's an interpro squash player for Leinster and also has coaching qualifications. She plays guitar and sings and has her own business here in Dublin. She runs a sports shop. And just over two years ago, she was introduced to Scientology, the Church of Scientology, by a friend called Tom. And Mary, let me just summarize the bare skeleton of what, what I know about you. You were introduced by Tom. The idea was that Scientology offered you a chance to further your career, your self-fulfillment, your freedom and control over your own life if you took a course which you did and you paid for it. And whether you succeeded in that or not, the idea was that you go to do a second course and you pay for that and so on to a third course and you pay for that. And you found yourself being drawn into this organization and you began to get worried about it and concerned about your place in it. And then your family brought pressure to bear upon you, or influence at least to bear upon you, to get out. And because of the concern and efforts on their part and on the parts of your friends, you eventually de-clutched with some difficulty, with some difficulty. Is that a fair sort of summary in, in broad outline? Yes, yes, in broad outline. Yes. Why are you frightened to be here tonight? I'm frightened to be here, Gay, because I'm intimidated by the people who are here from the Church of Scientology. The first point I would like to make is that the reason I'm here is because I'm the only Irish person who is an ex-member of the Church of Scientology who is prepared to speak out. People, ex-members don't speak out. That's the first point. The second point is it's interesting that the Church of Scientology has seen fit to fly in two people from England today for this show. When I'm Irish, we're dealing with the, the Church of Scientology in Ireland are they not happy to have their own members here speak? You got out relatively easily, did you not? I did because my family worked very quickly and very thoroughly to get information on the Church of Scientology and but for that intervention I wouldn't be here today. Was there pressure brought to bear upon you when you were getting out or at any time while you were in when you first began to voice your reservations? Uh, from whom? From the from, church? From the church, yes. Well, I didn't actually voice my reservations to the church. By the time my family had intervened, I had made a commitment to the church that I was going to give up my business and move to England and work for the church for one billion years. Because at that stage, I believed in reincarnation, which I don't believe in. One billion years? Yeah, just one billion years. And they had got, uh, their influence had got you to the point of almost selling up your business, is yes. that so? Yes. It was, their suggestion was that I would be more fulfilled in Scientology and would it not be a good idea if I sold my business. Okay. Um, so you're frightened to be here tonight. When you finally decided to leave, was there pressure and intimidation brought to bear? When I left Scientology, the following week I had about 20 phone calls from people in Scientology uh, to find out why I hadn't come back and reported on the intervention with my family because I was drilled how to deal with my family by members of the church. You were told what to say to your family. I would have a member of the Church of Scientology role-playing my mother or my sister or my brother-in-law, and I would answer them um, defending the Church of Scientology. And you did pretty good at that? I was a good student, I believe. Yes. And eventually then you got these phone calls. Were, were they threatening phone calls, intimidating phone calls, uh, bullying? Not, uh, not at that stage, but... The problem with them was that they were always, they were to my business, they were to my home, they were invasive. I found them very much invading my privacy. Um, I just, the intimidation, the reason why I feel intimidation is because um, I am frightened because the Church of Scientology in the past has revealed personal details given by people like me in confidence to them during counselling sessions and that's why I'm frightened. Mm. because they have used details given in, in confidence to silence their critics. Mm. Okay. Now, PJ Phelan is beside you. Good evening to you, PJ. Good evening. And he is from Clonmel, County Tipperary. And his brother, Tony, who is now aged what? 
34. 34. He's been in for about six going on seven years. That's correct. Yes. He was recruited in Silicon Valley in, in California when he was working there, and you were extremely disturbed. Amongst the things you say in your statement about your brother Tony is, in the beginning we were unaware of what we now view as the sinister nature of the organization, but we did note as many changes in our brother's outlook and personality, as well as an adverse effect on his relationship with us. This led us into investigating Scientology as a philosophy and organization. In our opinion, Tony's membership of the organization is not voluntary. We believe it's a result of coercive and destructive pseudo-scientific processes based on deception, dependency, and fear. Further, the organization, we believe, is exerting mind control techniques on our brother to the extent of influencing him not to review fully the information we have discovered. That's pretty strong stuff, PJ. Yes, that would be the opinion of, of our family at this stage. Uh, basically, um, our concern came about for several reasons, but my mother died seven years ago. Tony at the time was in California, came home for the funeral and went back within a few days. Sometime later he did a free personality test, which is one of the major recruiting techniques used by Scientology. Uh, in Dublin at the moment, they use it in Middle Abbey Street, there's an offer there a free personality test. And as far as we're concerned, that's basically a front to get people to come in, they identify weaknesses in their characters. They then offer to help them to sort out the problems they have. In doing so, they'll do a short course, maybe charge them 20 or 30 pounds. Subsequently, they'll tell them, you've done very well in this course, you're extremely good. What you need is the next. But you have deeper problems than you realize or we realized, and you're going to have to do further courses. If you don't do them, you're going to be worse off than you are when you come in here to us. And we have been told that within maybe two or three weeks of contact with Scientology and working with them, that they can totally control the person. And the price goes up with each series of lectures, is that well, it? Well, we don't know exactly how much money Tony has spent on it. Uh, one of his friends, who was very concerned about Tony, wrote to us in 91. And at that stage, he estimated that Tony would have spent something in the region of thirty thousand pounds on Scientology thousand. courses. What? How much did you spend, Mary, on altogether in the in the years you were there? Well, I I was one of the lucky ones, Gay. I only spent two thousand pounds in the two years. Yes, but I'm very lucky. What, what do you mean lucky? That you hadn't got the money to, to I'm spend? I'm lucky because I I have a business and I was very much aware that I didn't have disposable income to spend. But they pressured me. They pressured me an awful lot. If I'd had if I'd had a hundred thousand pounds, I would have spent it. It's mm. my opinion. Mm. Well, Peter Mansell is public relations uh, spokesperson for Scientology in the UK, and Gerard Ryan is spokesperson for the Church uh, here in Ireland. What's what's your reaction to that, Peter? To what you've heard? Well, Nothing that you first haven't of all, heard I think, before. Um, you know, probably a lot of people here in the audience don't really know what Scientology is. We're talking about a subject that isn't uh, very clear, and the things that. Um, Mary and PJ are saying they're kind of alarming and I can imagine a lot of people are, are, are right now feeling alarmed like what is this Church of Scientology? Just to give like a real simple um, history of the church, it's uh, just celebrated its 40th anniversary. There are churches in 113 countries around the world, there are 8 million members and uh, one of the things you have to look at, the kind of allegations that um, Mary and PJ are saying, they're not new. I mean, anybody here that reads the newspaper has kind of read this kind of thing before. Uh, one of the things that's the most significant thing, I think, at the beginning to look at is all of this kind of allegation comes from a particular source. It's not just, uh, you know, this isn't just PJ got his information from somewhere. And we all know where he got it from. He got it from a woman called Mar um, Bonnie Wood. She's an American evangelical Christian. And she made her life's purpose is uh, steering people away from other religions and into hers. That is the source of PJ's information. Is it, PJ? Absolutely. It's, it's not, actually, because the first problem that the family had is... How much information Sorry, you got from... from Peter, uh, I'd just like tell to reply. Us, uh, tell Gay how much information you got from Bonnie Woods. I'd like to reply. Now, well, basically, reply, honestly. the first problem we had in relation to this Scientology was trying to decide what <clears> is a serious problem or not. We took a very analytical approach to it. We read numerous sources of material, and we actually came to a stage where my brother John and I actually came up with conflicting information. And as such, we actually sat back with two different suge suggested strategies to approach Scientology. We actually stopped totally conflicting suggestions, but both people, both people that we spoke to at the time, were very concerned about Scientology. We actually stopped and we sat back, 
And we said we'd wait to see would Tony come to his senses. Well, is Tony here? Are you there, Tony? Are you are you Tony? That's right. Good evening That's to you. Yes. And good what, evening to you. What, good evening to you. What what's your reaction to PJ's accusations? Well, I'm afraid I've been hearing it for quite a while now, for over a year, and um, just regarding his um, statement that I was like there was adverse effects on my personality. It's curious that this opinion didn't occur until he got his derogatory information from Bonnie Woods, etc. I've been in Scientology for, I don't know how many, four years or something previous to that. And even though there was some concern uh, on one or two occasions because of poor newspaper reports, there was never any, what's, there was never whatsoever any statement to me that there was that um, people thought that my personality had in any way had changed you happy and content being a member of the church uh, let's see there's a, there's a wrong emphasis here or there's a wrong concept here I, I don't consider my uh, being in Scientology is being is being li in life Scientology is about life it's about learning more about life when you there are the term rundowns are mental processes spiritual processes in Scientology. As you, as you make use of these um, processes, etc., you get realizations, not about Scientology, but about life. And they're the gains that I've made. But I mean, you're perfectly happy as you are. Yeah. And you're resisting PJ and the family's efforts to Absol rescue you. Absolutely, well. totally. Who, who's to be rescued? Uh, there's nobody to rescue. Well, what, what do you say to that, PJ? The, the guy is an adult. He's... Basically, I agree, agree he's an adult. He was recruited at a time of emotional stress, and since then they have used various hypnotic techniques on him. I'm sorry, I don't think you didn't sneer at me. I wasn't sneering, I was laughing. What you're saying is absurd and ridiculous, and it's been disproven in courts all over the world. No, just sorry. this idea of mind If you control. want to take court cases into it, there are numerous court <clears throat> cases which have shown what Scientology is all about. Scientology is about making, making money and controlling people's minds. Yes, Mary. Well, just the, I just noticed that the only people who laughed when PJ mentioned hypnotic techniques, were you Scientologists? That's because of people can I, here sorry, don't know sorry, what it's about. Sorry, sorry, can I just make my point, yeah. please? The point is because we believe, I certainly believe now, that I was subject to mind control. And the only person that I have asked, since I've come out of Scientology, I have asked several medical doctors and psychiatrists, but you don't like psychiatrists uh, and psychologists, uh, how would they know they were under mind control? And to a man and to a woman. They have all answered, well, we wouldn't know. The only person who has answered me when I have asked that question, that they would know because they wouldn't be able to express themselves, was a Scientologist. That's a very interesting point. Well, all right, then. Let's, we have Kieran Benson here. Good evening to you, Kieran, who's head of psychology in UCD. <coughs> does, does that make sense to you, what Mary is saying? I don't think I'd be using words like mind control. I, one of the things that strikes me about the uh, Scientologists, having read their books, um, is the degree to which they use the surface rhetoric of, of psychology while at the same time damning it as a science and damning psychiatry. Uh, the come on that they have on the streets are these uh, personality tests. Uh, I'd be very interested in asking Mr. Mansell if there's a manual, if there's any research, because it strikes me reading the tests, and I, I was acquainted with you 25 years ago as well in Tottenham Court mm -hmm. Road, that um, they're not tests at all. Is this the Oxford test you're talking about? Well, this is part of it. I mean, it's called the standard Oxford uh, test. Yes. Not, Nothing to do with Oxford. No, all, but it, it, these things gain credibility yes. by these associations. Standard sounds good. You'll see on the profiles that they have bits of statistics. Mm. They talk about the 2.5% of the population that will object uh, to Scientology. They're very good at this sort of thing, but there's never, ever, ever any evidence. And the whole point about science is that there must be some evidence. Well, reading Dianetics and reading the What is Scientology, it's full of assertions, uh, many very vague concepts, but nothing, nothing specific and no evidence. Okay. Um, as you pointed out, we, we do have disagreements with uh, some of the conventional treatments in psychology and in, in psychiatry in particular, some of the physically treatments, uh, physical treatments that have been proven to be damaging. We do have problems with things like electric shock treatment. But uh, in terms of evidence, it's an interesting uh, point. There are, as I said at the beginning, approximately 8 million Scientologists in the world. Tony, who, despite PJ's feeling about it, uh, will tell you he's a Scientologist, he's happy to be a Scientologist. May, it, may I to ask helps a question, him, no. question on that? Well, let me answer. We're getting to this thing. You know, no, no, I was if, asking if somebody comes off the street and does one of these tests, uh -huh. 
How do you process the information by which it comes back as a score? When you say process the information, what do you mean? You have 200 questions on right. these questionnaires. What do you do with them? The, uh, each, of the, each of the uh, questions has a score to it. The scores are all added up. Uh, and how do you work this out? Uh, the people who designed the test work it out. I mean, who, who is out of interest were they? Um, I don't remember the gentleman's, gentleman's name, but... But isn't uh, that interesting that <coughs> 8 million people have had this come on and you don't know... I don't know the gentleman's name. Let's be ridiculous. I don't know the gentleman's name, but, but I, it's, it's I can tell you... Of your, should we both talk operation? together or should we answer each other's questions? What's right. going what's to well, work if here? If you answer my question, okay, I, I'm I answering take my your next question. question. You know, this reminds me of that, that uh, TV program... Uh, mash, you know, where they both talk at the same time. Reminds me of Monty Python and that machine that goes ping. Right, okay. <laughs> I'll drink to that. Um, the personality test was uh, based on existing uh, tests that were used in the field of psychology. It's not That's a... my area. Which ones is a matter of interest? I, I, well, I'll tell you what, if you want to, I can concede here. You obviously know a lot more than I do about this field, so we can maybe save a lot of time by not getting into it. The, no, the I'd like to get into it because it's obviously the right, first well, point of contact then. with the public. Let's get into it. You know, I don't know the names, I don't know the psychological history. You do, that's your field of expertise. I'm a Scientologist. What I can tell you is I've worked in churches of Scientology all over the world and I've seen the personality, personality test in use. Uh, these guys have done it, you know. It's t something like 20,000 people in Dublin have done it. It's, uh, but that's absolutely no that's explanation as to what it is. No, it's well, not. A, no, but what I'm telling you, he doesn't, he doesn't what know. I'm saying Willie, is, it's like you, it's about as threatening as a slice with of Jerry toast Ryan's and marmalade. Yes, we've I've, had a number uh, of contacts yes, with the Church yes, of Scientology over yes, the last couple of years, and you know, one question that we've always asked is that w the Scientology um, people are at pains to point out that they're a religion and not a cult, mm -hmm. and this begs the question: Is who's the godhead of the religion? Um, L. Ron Hubbard is the founder and he's the person who wrote the book on Dianetics. Is he God? Are no. you saying this man who died Absolutely some not. years ago was God? Well, Absolutely then who, not. Who is your himself. God and who is your figure and what was the relationship between this man on whom all your religion is founded and God? Mr. Hubbard was the, the uh, researcher who, who studied into this area and developed the subject. He's not God and uh, he himself makes it absolutely incredibly clear that he's just a man and made this, these discoveries and made them available to people. On the subject of religion, I, I knew this was going to come up. I brought one little exhibit with me that anybody is welcome to look at this later on. Would Could you it? answer just the second oh. part of my question? Okay, no, we're we have to... a fight or a, a conversation. Well, no, it, this is public debate. Okay, well, that's, well I'll keep, you keep the, talking, I'll keep talking. No, the second part this is... This is an 88-page uh, document and presented who do you pray by... To? An, who Oxford do you pray to? University, Oxford of Oxford, England, Oxford University professor who has been studying religion all his life, traveled all over the world studying different religions, and I'm sure uh, Mr. Gard here at the front knows the name Brian Wilson, eminent professor of Oxford University. Uh, he says. This is an 88 page expertise studying all of the various indicia which are common to religions all over the world, yes. and at the end of the 88 page document he concludes that without any shadow of doubt through all the criteria by which religion is judged the church of scientology so and who is your philosophy. god then who do you pray who to? do you pray to god is god that's like you know who is the christian god the christian god is well, god. we know the, the christian god came on earth he died on the cross mm -hmm. you know there's a text there about who he is i can't find any reference in the books as to who the god figure is of your religion exactly the same god the only difference is we don't we the church of scientology uh, isn't a belief system in that we, we don't have teachings that outline dogma ab about God. Okay, so Mary, church... who, who are you praying to if you were indeed you were praying to anybody? I'd like to make two points, yes. Gay. First of all, when I went into what Dianetics is what I went into first, which is the first part of yes. Scientology or the, the related field, I had no idea it was a religion. I had no idea it was a church. And that's, that is the first, well, the first deception is the OCA test. You, you thought it was a self-improvement I thought course, it was a science it? of the mind which yes. had been independently researched yes. and proven. Yes. It has yes. not. It has that's not. the first point. Yes. Secondly, with, with regard to religion, um, it, it, uh, I didn't know it was a religion. Um, my, my background is Catholic. Um, I probably don't practice as a Catholic the way I should but I certainly have a, a personal relationship yes. with God. And since I've come out of Scientology, the information I have about Ron Hubbard's uh, attitude to Jesus Christ is a real eye-opener. And I, I know Peter will deny this. The second point I'd like to make is, Scientology is a religion in America, 
and in Australia. Now in America, can I just make a point that the Ku Klux Klan is a religion in America as are several satanic churches. So to be considered a religion, a religion. is I not see. really yeah. the issue. Yes, the I issue see. we're dealing with is deceptive Gerard techniques. Ryan, according to you, what happened? You're, you know more about Mary than, than anybody else. Yes. According to you, what happened to Mary? What well, um, Mary was like in our, our church for, for a, a while and a, According to her, in, in her own words, she was actually having a, a great time. She thought it was great, right? Yes. Now, her, her um, in-laws decided to get in contact with the Woodses, who are these um, fundamentalist Christians in the UK, etc. And got... Wrong. Well, I'm not married, so they're not my in-laws. Sorry. She's not married. It was actually her brother-in-law, her, the husband of her sister. I yes. presume that's all yes. husband-in-law. Yes. And um, well, he, they, they decided to get in, in, in touch with these guys in the UK who, who had all this information, which basically explained just how, you know, how bad Scientology yes. was. And then, and then, the, um, then her in-laws in actually hired these guys to come over from the UK and do um, a number on it. Yes. Is that true? Uh, I think I'll let people yeah, know. Who are the in-laws? Yeah, there you are, in-laws. Good evening to you. Yes. Is that um, true? Gay, um, that's totally untrue. The situation is that, uh, first of all, we didn't hire anybody. We saw a situation with Mary, um, who was, let's say, five years ago, as you described, a brilliant person, an athlete, a very gregarious person, a brilliant entertainer, good fun, a good business person, uh, also an expert in marketing. Over a period of time, she gradually became alienated from her family, she became alienated from her friends. Her friends drifted away from her, and she ostracized herself, herself from her friends. She stopped playing the guitar, stopped singing, stopped socializing. This was a pattern which developed, and sometimes we thought it might be because she had a relationship that broke down or whatever. Um, but gradually we saw very, very poor trends. The, probably the highlight of it was a Christmas period, which Mary would normally spend perhaps two weeks in our home. Uh, and I'm the in-law. Maybe 10 or 15 people would join in a family occasion at Christmas. Christmas was made a disaster by two things. First of all, a very close friend of ours, a cousin, died tragically of a heart attack on Christmas Eve. Mary, who was a very close friend of his, didn't attend the funeral, wouldn't go out. She said, oh God, he's dead. So we said, this is a serious problem. So the family went about researching Scientology at that point, and we did very independent research. There's people in the family who are researchers. We spoke to people in a number of different religions. We spoke to people who are IR consultants. Um, we spoke to people who are independent. And we could find nobody who could tell us that Scientology was an acceptable way of living. We then decided to confront Mary, and we got the best advice we could. And we discovered that the only way to get Mary out was to bomb her with love and to uh, identify for her the weaknesses in Scientology. We use things like panorama programs, yes, etc. Yes. Okay, the panorama program describes Ron Hubbard and shows his lifestyle, etc. Yes. We were very, very lucky with the help of a family, yes. uh, the Phelan family, you, to get you, Mary out. You reckon you sort of got her in time? <coughs> we got her in time. Now, okay. over a period of time subsequently, okay. there was a dramatic change in Mary. Mm. And on the comment of the um, being subject to brain conditioning, etc. Mary certainly was conditioned. I don't know if she was under some kind of mind control, but she was certainly conditioned to field our responses with very quick right. answers. Okay, but I know there are lots of more people who want to get in, but I have to take a commercial break here. Come back to us after this. Thank you. I'm a, I'm a member of the Church of Scientology, yes. and yes. I've been a member of the Church of Scientology for eight years. Yes. And what I, know, what I observe here is an actual hatchet job of my religion. Yes. And I noticed John Farrell here from in Dublin. I noticed Willie O'Reilly from RTE, Jerry yes. Ryan's show. Yes. I noticed a lot of people here who hate Scientology. Uh -huh. you know? And yeah. every single one of these people get it from the same source. This is not isolated people. It's all from the same source. You know? what, what, what is that source? That source you're talking about, Bonnie Woods and a guy... Oh, we're back to the woods yeah, again. And a yeah, guy yeah, by yeah, the name of John Attack. You've never heard of Bonnie Woods. Bonnie Woods. I've never heard of Bonnie Woods. And a guy by the name of John Attack. Yeah. They write books. They wrote books uh, which were slanderous and libelous of Ron Hubbard and certain Church of Scientology members. Okay. Now, I'm actually an Irish citizen, okay? I'm, I'm 27 years of age now. I'm, I was raised a Catholic in a good family by a good mother who was also a good Catholic. 
I'm, I'm absolutely ashamed right now that my religion is being taken apart by people who are fundamentally bigots, fundamentally have a, an abiding hatred, not just for Scientology, but for any minority religion in this society. Is that, is that Mary and PJ? You're I wouldn't. Them? I do not blame Mary or PJ. I actually like PJ deep down. I told him this before. <laughs> PJ is a very likable character, right? Yes. Now I've said I've met PJ News. He knows me, so we've we've had great talks. Yes, but but, 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 but what I'm saying is he's getting it from the one source. You say you've never heard of this. Well, oh, no, I've never heard of Bonnie Woods, and in fact, I, I find it really shocking that you can sit here and pretend that we are all fundamentally bigots and attacking your religion. That's not what no, no, wait a second, because you're not listening to what we're saying, nor are you listening to what the issues are at stake here. Over two thirds of your membership, of your new members, are people who are aged, who are under 25. How many have you done with Scientology? Can I go on? How many so many courses have you done? Well, I've done the one-day course. I did my 50, and I read Dianetics, well, and I have. Excuse me. Excuse me, you're not listening. First of all, most I, I did have a beard, but I didn't give a false name. Excuse me. What's wrong with having, what's wrong with having a beard? beard? And I didn't give a false name. Well, you give a false name. name. And he told me that he was going out for a, a coke, and we never saw him again until the next day. <laughs> so. This event on, took place yeah. over three, three years, years ago, oh, yes. and I find it astonishing that your members of this religion have nothing better to do with yourselves than just concentrate on these petty hatreds and injuries you think were He's done a, to you. Okay. It's astonishing. Now, wait a second. The fact of the matter is, is that your religion is more like Freemasonry than Catholicism. Oh. It is not based. It is not based on open and available oh, texts. Right. It is based on a secret so hierarchy of confidential you initiation. You know perfectly well that only one out of one thousand <laughs> members gets beyond class twelve. Who brought this wonderful Sorry. spokesperson? <laughs> Do you deny that this is your own? High structure of your hierarchy? The bridge this is mine. Let me show that. Wait a second. This gentleman says bridge. that that's mine. Is that not published in a book called What is Scientology? Published by Bridge the Foundation? Next, the next day you were on the Jerry Ryan show and you were slandering my religion again. And I take exception to that. No, as well. I take exception that you take advantage of the vulnerable and the young to isolate them and brainwash them <laughs> into believing that your system is that somehow is the only way true. of thinking or living. So, you are. Yeah, I'm the executive director of, 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 of the local church Scientology yeah, here in Ireland. That's right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the statements that this man makes are slanderous and are actually totally untrue. I'm going to finish my statement, just sit down there and let this man control it. <laughs> when, when, I, when I take a person in, we had this gentleman here talk about personality tests yes. and trying to get the, uh, the person on the panel into a kind of a riddle or a daze. The personality test is the personality mm -hmm. test. I have people ask me every single day, how is it marked up? How is it done? Or what's this or what's that? It's 200 questions. The questions are actually done in a set way. It's, it's, it's very simple. It's, it's, it's very straightforward. And we take in a very uh, easy way the, the traits of the personality of the person. Well, I'm glad to know that you thought that Kieran Benson was trying to confuse Peter because all he was doing was asking questions. Okay, about let you. me just finish. Yeah. So, I have people who come into me who have had maybe two or three years of psychiatric drugs, who have had ECT operations, frontal lobotomies, and these people, these people, well, I'm afraid that they are gay, and, and, and a lot of people are on psychiatric drugs. And what they're, about them? Well, they come in, to you they come in and, and they say that, you know, it's not working. They're not getting any actual benefit. And, and Scientology does work for them, is that what you're saying? I didn't say that. Well, yet. you were going to say that. <laughs> you were building up to it. Okay, let, let me go to the, that man there. What, what are you, are you um, trying to my name is John Phelan. Yes. I'm Tony's brother. Yes. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that um, despite their sneers about hypnosis, there is hypnosis in Scientology. In the, in the auditing course, and it's the second step is a countdown procedure that works seven down to zero, and you have to wait until the eyelids flicker. Now, in Science of Survival, yeah. Hubbard actually just said, this is... Act uh, excuse me, I mind if I finish. In Science of Survival, Hubbard actually described this as being a means of inducing hypnotic trance. That is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, uh, sorry, that is absolutely ridiculous. You've never I've got a copy of it right here. Read Could the we book? hear from Peter, please? Yes, right. Please. From the beginning of Scientology in the 1950s, you can pick any Scientology book. You will find statements in there. I'm sure Mr. Gard even will admit this. Uh, 
Mr. Hubbard, from the beginning of the days of Scientology, stressed that uh, hypnotism in, in its essence is a destructive subject and shouldn't be used, and every, uh, every procedure you'll ever find in Scientology uh, it stresses that uh, hypnotism is nothing like anything to be used in Scientology. Okay, so sorry, sorry, I've had a hand up for quite a while, sorry. Hello there, what do you want to say? Yes. Hi. Just to sort of calm things down, I don't know anything about the Church of Scientology, mm. for starters, but just for a sort of general awareness, what is the very beginning, what is the sort of thing that they latch on to, to encourage a person to take a course and to spend £20 or whatever? Is it an inadequacy within the person I've, to I've start told with? you, it's a promise of self-improvement. That's, yeah, that's the hope Do they which, sort of, do they well, lodge into your inadequacy hope. to start with? Well, well, Willie, can you explain well, it then? Yes. What I would say is that uh, in the early 80s, I spent some time with the Moonies in yeah. California, <laughs> yeah. and I went up and investigated some of their techniques and it does worry me some of the similarities I see mm -hmm. here and that is that you know at the latter part of 20th century you know the established church is breaking down on the fringes and people are looking for something to fulfill this sort of sensuous spirituality they have inside and often these people are young vulnerable and questioning and these people and I'm particularly talking referring back to Unification Church but I do see some sim similarities here come along with a very simplistic answer right and they attack these people in the way they're most vulnerable the Moonies did it through love bombing lots of attention make them feel comfortable it's like a religious Tupperware party they make it much more easier to say yes than to say no and I would say that mirrors the experience listening oh, to Mary oh, oh, because Mary. she was probably at that stage they, she she said already that she's not a practicing Catholic. She found a simple answer. She got in. Now she's back out. And I wonder now, Gay, what is her religious beliefs now that she's out of the church? In, in a word, Mary, you're, are you back to Holy Mother Church? Um, no, because, because of the pressure uh, brought to bear on me by Scientology to attend all these uh, meetings at weekends and during the week, I have a very, very busy work schedule. And I spend all my free time going in on course. Yes, but what are you and now? Again, your now, I, I believe there is a God, yes. I see. I see. But can we clear up a couple of things about no, no, Mary? No, no, there, there is a God, but not a Catholic God. Can we clear oh, up? It's, it, I'm, it is the God oh, okay. of Catholics and Protestants. What is this about you? Why were you sent to a doctor at one stage? Oh, I was sent to a doctor before I did what was called the purification rundown. Yes, and then It's you, the first step on the bridge, you, but... You found you were not allowed to go to your own GP. I asked to go to my own GP. I wasn't yes. allowed. And you were sent to another doctor. I was sent to a doctor who was not uh, registered with the Irish Medical Council. Is this, is this so, uh, Kieran? This, this uh, I, I believe this is Mary's story. I, I see. Yeah. Mary's well, it's story. true. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. yes, you may say something, yes. I'm a Scientologist yes. and I have been since 1990. Okay? Yes. I did the purification one then and I went to my local doctor. There was no question of where you go. Well, I like didn't have that experience, Siobhan. Okay. I'm well, Scientology as a religion, right? It's, I was brought up a Catholic as well. I didn't drop my Catholicism. What I did, and I found out for me, was lots of answers that I had about things in my life for me. So, basically, what I, I didn't drop the Are idea of Catholic? God, because I still believe mm. in Are God. Are you a Catholic? I believe in God. It Are doesn't mean that it's Jesus Christ. Are you a Catholic? I believe, no, I do not practice Are Catholicism. You a Catholic? I'm a no. Scientologist. I use because you Scientology can't be a Christian in my life be a Scientologist. to help me and to help that, my family. Be a that is not true. Scientology, Scientology true. respects all religions. You do not have to change your religion to be a Scientologist. Which is not compatible you can with still go to your church of whatever you do. Before you okay, came well, maybe my guard can throw some, some uh, uh, yeah, light on that. Yes, say, in our work in the Dialogue Centre, yeah. we have been having Studying a lot of people, all of these, these groups. People, yes, and I would yes. have to say, first of all, the personality test, it was developed by a merchant seaman. Uh, it wasn't done in Oxford, certainly. Yeah. Certainly, if you had a Ballymun test, not, not very many people <laughs> would, have, would tend to do it. With all due respect, and, uh, the, the actual reality is that it's borrowed from the Johnson temperament test. Uh, uh, so if they don't know the background, they should perhaps do some research. That's My evidence job, is Mike. that it was done by a merchant seaman. Second point, we talked about the character of the founder. This person was an inveterate liar. Okay. He was, bingo, so bingo. Secondly, secondly, Mike. He was in fact involved Mike, in sex we've been magic over this. practices. You know what? One he, thing you have uh, to understand. One of the main experts in this American is not religion. A new conversation. Uh, is Mike Gard and I uh, have had this conversation. I don't know how many times. So he, I haven't had a conversation with you at all. Is, you've had a bunch uh, of conversations with me in your own office. And then, in your and then, own office, Mike. So if I could finish my point before you I... You won't finish with that rubbish, because I tell you, 
He, your source. He, he, to, so your he basically he, was a con man a he also was involved with sex magic, is which is trying to create a baby. Uh, and the basis of a fellow called Alistair Crowley. Where's the proof of this? Oh, this, right. this proof. This, this proof. Where is this in writing? Where's, where's this is in writing, and he, he actually, he on he actually in one of your lectures, the Philadelphia Robert lecture series, he very tapes. carefully suggests. I have a recording of it if you want to hear it, where he actually says, Alistair Crowley, my great friend, and he is involved with that process. He took off with this fellow's money. And the last question I'd like to ask is to the mission holder here. Yes. Mr. John Keane, yes. could you ask him how many times has he taken young people, sometimes older people, for a walk to a bank in the vicinity of Middle Abbey Street over the last 10 years? That's Good very, question. very interesting. I, I'm surprised you, you didn't have short circuit TV trying to uh, uh, follow need me. You know? we have at I'm least just 10 answering people your question, have question now, Mike. Experience. Just let me answer the question, right? Because many times you come into my centre, I don't, you know, I don't talk to you. I leave it to Gerard Ryan. And I'm very busy with what I do. But I state one thing, you know, if I walk up with those people, I've listened to them. And I'm not knocking what anyone here in this How country is doing. You one second, over? please. How many I'm times trying you to answer to the, the question that you put to me. How many times? I'm trying to answer the question. Can I answer it? Certainly. Thank you. That's How what I'd like times? you to do. No. How many times? I would do that uh, maybe once, twice, it could be three times in a month, in a week, or whatever. As many times as if, if a person is going up to a bank machine and they want some... And they want to get <coughs> money out. I, I can, I can walk up with them, or maybe I don't. I but what, just, can I just... Do you do that in clearings with the manager as well? Stephen O'Brien, Stephen O'Brien, Stephen O'Brien, Stephen O'Brien, Stephen O'Brien, Stephen O'Brien, the end though, yeah. Gay, gay um, I, I have not read or spoken to Bonnie Woods, so, yes. I mean, when I approached... I did a series of articles on a range of new religious movements last October in the Indo, and as the Church of Scientology was across the road from the Indo, I decided, well, let, well let's start there. Um, and the question of money kept cropping up. Um, the people I spoke to, I spoke to, to uh, uh, Jared Ryan, who's on your panel tonight, and I spoke to a former Scientologist, and the question of money kept coming up. Now, Jared confirmed to me in the office that they have applied to the, he, I asked them if they'd applied, I understood they'd applied to the revenue commissioners for charitable status for in Ireland. Exemption. For tax exemption. Exemption from income tax, property tax, probate tax, stamp duty, a whole range across the board. You don't have to register for VAT. And he said, at the, and I, I just checked my notebook tonight before he came out, he said, we've either got it or we're working on it or we're trying to sort it out. So I, I, I'd be interested when I'm finished talking if somebody could tell me if you have got charitable status from the Revenue Commission. We'll give you, we'll give you the scoop. Tax no, no. Sorry, Gary. You mean it was turned down or you haven't no, applied for no, it? No, it's still, it's still, uh, it's still being examined. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Still, yeah. You know, Gary, I'd like to... If we, we could we just... Okay, okay well, well let, 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 let Peter give us a reaction to yeah. everything he's, he's okay, said. Okay, I'd like so to just bring things back a little bit. You would say it's all a mishmash of untruths and lies and... Well, not necessarily. There's a few things that really need to be sort of drawn into perspective. Yes. Uh, you know, every now and then we say something and all the audience laughs and, and I can understand your reaction, you know, because it's kind of, it might seem a little bit funny. But I'll tell you what, the whole, the, the issue of the concern of families when one member gets into a new religion, uh, it's not really that funny. And despite the fact that, you know, PJ and I might be sitting on opposite sides of this little debate, it's, uh, it's not an easy situation. But there's a couple of things that should be made really, really clear. Um, every conversation I've ever had with John up there in the audience or PJ here or um, Mike God. Mary no any of the other members of the Fielding family who I'm sure are here yes. uh, every single conversation I've had from the beginning of this whole debate that we've been in has been to tell them that anything I can do to help sort out the situation I'll do I've gotten with Tony I've said to Tony you know like uh, you know we've got to work out some way to get your family to understand what you're doing and why and at least just say to Tony, you know, PJ, I'll tell you this right now, and the other feelings here. If you would just say to, to Tony, um, we don't like what you're doing, we don't agree with what you're doing, we don't like Scientology, but it's your choice, you're an adult, you can go ahead and do it. That would be absolutely the end of this, it would be the end totally. Well, but they refuse to do it. This, have you? Sorry, you absolutely they haven't. Okay. Let, let me just finish, because there's, one, there's one other point I wanted to make. Let me finish one other point. There's one other point I wanted to make. Uh, every time that any of the feelings have contacted me, I've tried to help and I've offered to help. The very first uh, letter I had from PJ, and there have been a number of them since, were written in this language. Unless you meet our demands, we will... And that's an exact quote, isn't it, PJ? I don't think so, but maybe. Well, I've got the letters with me. We can drag them out and do the paperwork if you like. 
unless you meet my demands, we will do this and this and this and this, a whole list of threats. It's basically terrorism. You know, uh, it is. Oh, uh, Peter, come on. It is basically Peter. terrorism. Hey, I want to see hey. because I want the, the, the terrorism behind yes. yes. You are a, you're a terrorist. Game. Both of these people, Game. both of these people, Mary, Mary, who claims that she's fr Mary, who claims to be frightened. To me. I am Mary Phelan. I am I'm talking about this, the lady next to me. me. You say to me, I'm talking about the, not this, Mary. This, you can be on next. This Sorry. is Mary Phelan, and she's you've never spoken never, to her. In that case, I'm, like I might have said Mary Phelan. I meant Mary Johnson. Well, you met Mary Johnson. Okay, you Mary Johnson. Know, you've never spoken to her, right? No, I haven't. I don't know you from a hole in the wall. No, well, you're about to. Mary Johnson. Mary Johnson tells you all how frightened she is to be here because of intimidating people like myself, and she tells you how all of her money went went to the Church of Scientology. Let's look at a couple of things. If Mary Johnson's frightened or intimidated by me or any Scientologist, all she has to do is go away. No, because but I what she does instead, truth, what she I'm does instead, is she gets placards make and made. makes demonstrations outside of our I churches. Didn't any cards, yes, Were you, you did. There? Were you there? Oh, you must have seen. Have the uh, uh, I John, was there. I went to tell the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, so she was at the John, why are you shouting at me? Why are you shouting, John? You shouting, John? Have, you have you given up the fight, PJ? I would like to reply yes. to the terrorism yes. accusation. Yes. yes. First point I'd like to make is unless this, you this meet morning, our demands, we please. will blah 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 blah. Before I left Temple Moor this morning, the last thing I did, I went to the local guard station to inform her of the show tonight to alert her to the fact that I was worried about my house my family and my children. Oh, oh God. No, I'd like to follow up the point. <clears throat> the last time, the last time I called to the Church of Scientology, I met Dermot Ryan, who states he likes me, and he accused me of crimes. Now, basically, in Scientology, all the writings of L. Ron Hubbard are taken as scripture. In Hubbard's writings, it states that anyone who attacks Scientology is a criminal. That is a statement. My brother believes that, and that is part of the mind control set that all this thing is about. I am very angry with what Scientology has done to our family, what it's done to numerous people. Scientology people have, people has have done me. nothing to your family Let me finish. since the day you and I Let first me met, PJ, since the day you and I first met Let over me the finish. telephone, You're a it has rude been, person. I'm a very rude person, it has been an incessant, like incessant barrage of letters and threats from you, and despite all of that, until my getting slightly angry tonight, Every time we've talked, I've been patient, no. I've tried to help. Let me finish. I, now, the first I don't time I spoke think the to Church Peter of Scientology have any reason to be afraid of a threat from PJ. The first time None I spoke whatsoever. My, my the first None time whatsoever, but listen to it. The first Why time I spoke to Peter Mansell, he told me that his own family objected to his joining Scientology. Absolutely. That they were antagonistic to Absolutely. It. Now, eventually, what, tell happens, the rest of the what story? happens in Scientology is that eventually you will give up because when you see a person changing, as Scientology changes people, you eventually despair of them and you leave them go. Story. We it's will not family. leave our brother go. It's my know. family. Let me tell you about my family. Tony, Tony, do you want to, again, do you want to say a word about this? They're talking yeah. about you, as yeah. it were, in yeah. absentia okay. and, and the, the, the you are an adult person. That is, I'm 34 years of age yes. and the most, um, I, it's not, I don't like using strong words, but the most despicable thing about this is that there's an underlying implication that I'm incapable of decision, that I'm incapable of an analytical examination of yes. Scientology or anything else in life. And I just want to point out one more thing. For the five or six years that I've been uh, involved in Scientology, they have been the most successful years career-wise of my life. I've held very responsible positions. I hold one right now. I was recently promoted even. And I'm doing well in life. And I do attribute a, lo a lot of that to Scientology because it did it did allow me to discover things that were stopping me. And, yeah, yeah. and I, I did there, move there, forward. There is no answer to that, PJ. Yes, there is an answer. There is an answer. What, what, yeah. what is your answer? The what answer is, is that last December 12 months, Tony spoke to me. He'd just been made redundant from Amdal. Yes. He decided then to go into Scientology for 12 months training yes. and then become a full-time auditor with Scientology. Yes. At that stage, he expressed... It's not true. Uh, concern at the fact that he was now jobless and had no material assets. That from a person that was going in full time into Scientology, which he claims he loved or wanted to go into. No, and no, still he was concerned about having no material assets. That is not true. Having, no, not having a job. no. What he, is, what he has done here is taken statements that I've made and twisted them to his argument. Right? I've made certain statements that I would like to achieve something else. Right? Yes. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, but this is my priority, right? So I'm saying that I, I want to go and uh, do some training. Okay, let me hear, let me hear other voices. Yeah, statements yes, yeah. are actually true. What Peter yeah. just said that Tony said, he said it to all of, uh, to and all of us yeah. Yeah. together. Yes. Yeah. And so they are actually true. Our concerns about Scientology are profoundly based. Yeah. Yeah. There are, in a court ruling in, a, in a 1984, um, Justice Lately said, Scientology is based on lies and deceit. It is out to corrupt I people case, yes. and brainwash them. Yes. I have done an, an awful lot of reading. I, I really care so much <coughs> about Tony. Like, you know, I've done so much reading on, on what... I, I, I went so, I've done so much reading on this stuff that I, I could spend two hours here just describing what I've read and the information. But he's happy. Yeah. Yeah. He's happy. The, prob the problem is, he's, uh, the problem is, in Scientology, they've got their tone scales. They're not supposed but, to show see, doubt. Doubt see, what, is a very poor... You see, what what you're saying, it seems to me, and Kieran Best would be better able to voice this than that, you're, what you're suggesting is that he is so twisted and bent that he doesn't know he's twisted and bent. And how do you know when you're twisted and bent? Well, look, Am I making sense? Hold, hold on a minute. Let me hear from Kieran Best. I think there's a very important distinction yes. here, and that is that people are responsible to make decisions. Yes. Very often they're susceptible to influence or they're susceptible to the ideas. Yes. There's a difference between coercion and being misled. Mm. Uh, my question to Peter, to, to Mr. Mansell, was to do with the type of information that they claim to draw people in with, the whole psychological basis of the means by which they move people up a ladder. That's what I would like to question, because I think that's entirely misleading. Why don't we answer that? People, people may well go in, though, in, in good faith, and uh, mm. I, I personally feel that in a, a society like ours, people must make choices. Yes, they must be free to do They must be free to want. do yeah. so. What did you want to say, yeah. ma'am? Whatever you say about hypnosis or what words you want to use on it, why has Tony had to pay for courses on how to handle his family and if he can't handle them, disconnect? He hasn't spoken to PJ or John in oh, well over a year. And, you, and uh, have you any idea, rough estimate, have the family any rough estimate of how much he has paid into this church since? Joined. We couldn't put an, an, an estimate in 1991 was 30,000. 30,000. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you That's for yourself, he says he's verified himself to me 18,000 of that. But in, a, in an actual conversation that we've had. That is a lie. He now, says that's a lie. Now, on a lo a lie. online, let's, let's, this is a, yeah. a copy of a search in Scientology document called TR Line. It trains people how to tell lies convincingly. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's We're going around in circles. Are you another member of the team? I am. I'm, a, yeah. I'm one of Tony's sisters. Yeah. And I'd like to come back to some of the points that the Scientologists have made here tonight. Basically, they have said that we are here because we hate them. Yes. Yeah. They refer to us, I think, as being bigots. I don't hate Scientologists, and I'm certainly not a bigot. The only reason I'm here is because I care so much about my brother. He doesn't believe that now. And I think that is one of the main proofs we would even have, that he is under the control of an evil organization. He hasn't spoken to me since way before Christmas. I have tried ringing him. I have left messages on his answering machine. I, anytime I've rung that he answered the phone, he just slams the okay, phone down. Just, Peter Manson has sat there and, and said, we, we should talk to Tony. Okay, well, let me, let me we should ask communicate Tony. with him. Is, is that, to is that true, experiment. Tony, first of all? You don't talk to your family anymore. And if not, why not? Okay, there are, there's one thing happening here, and that uh, all these, all these expressions of love, right, which I, I've always desired expressions of love, but I, I, I've never heard so many expressions of love recently. At the same time, which is totally contradictory to that, is continuous efforts to undermine my decisions and my direction in life. And it's got to this point where we are here on the Late Late Show. And I think that's yeah. extreme. Yeah. All right. Okay, let me, let me go over here. I'll talk to a few more people over here. You're a Scientologist. Yes, yes good evening. Yes. Um, I've worked for the church all over the world as well, like yes. Peter. And um, we've heard all these different allegations from these families and so forth. But there's one thing that hasn't been said here tonight, and I do want to say that, is that all these allegations, number one, was the subject of a 40-year-long investigation with the U, um, United States Internal Revenue Service, the subject of brainwashing, manipulation, um, harassing people and yes. everything. And? And there is 12 linear feet of documentation in the Scientology room at the headquarters of the IRS, and they have now proved beyond a doubt that these allegations have, you know, are, not, are not correct. They are open to public view. And also, I think it's very important to say, and I want to say this, nothing has been said about the work that Scientology has done internationally in the area of drug, drug rehabilitation, 
getting inner city children through literacy programs where they can read and write. In South Africa, we put two million children where the government said, black children, where the government said they could not read and write, please, let me finish, where they could, said they could not be educated. Through, the, through LRH's study technology, we were, we were able to okay. educate okay. these two. Okay, no, all right. well, yeah. Yeah. well, all, all right, well, that, that was a fair, a fair bit. What, what do you, what do you well, answer Well, I, I need to just to respond to that. Yes. I mean, the community betterment, a social betterment and community action program programs were at an absolute nil in 1970 and the real reason was a cosmetic gesture after they lost the case in the U.S. in 1977 and Mary Sue Hubbard went to prison while L. Ron went underground and let his wife take the rap and it was at that stage that they suddenly got really interested in teaching illiteracy but what I really wanted to point out it's all been it's all and everyone's been exonerated this is yeah. like 10, well, 15 maybe. years ago. What are you doing? Why don't you come into the present But I can't yeah. just... Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. sorry John. Yes, uh, moments ago, uh, Willie asked about the deity. And I just... You do have the equivalent of Ten Commandments. They're called the Code of Honor. And maybe people here would like to hear a few of those 15 statements. The first three, very quickly. Okay. Never desert a comrade in need, in danger, or in trouble. Two, never withdraw an allegiance once granted. Three, never desert a group to which you owe your support. And number 12, I'll skip to number 12. Of never fear to hurt another okay. in a just cause. Okay. Now those are your, that's your moral code, isn't it? Somebody, those are your 15 somebody, commandments. Could I have a word from this man here, please? Yes. Somebody up, are you going to stand there and are, watch are you a member? No. no. Yeah. no. Yeah. Yeah. That's all yeah. Yeah. I never heard yeah. the word Scientology before tonight. Did you not? Just never ever. I'm astonished. But it appears to me, as an unbiased person, that they just want control of your bank account and your mind. That's and I would... I would just like to, I think, I, I, think, I think the most important thing is why do people get involved in what are cults? And I'd like to ask Mary to bring the whole thing back to where you started. Is Mary, you said, was a, an obviously intelligent person yes. who two years did a four-year right, course. Right. person who, did I think everything? her father yes. said yes. about the why entertainment. Why did you join? Okay. Exactly. Well, oh, oh, I beg your pardon. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Sorry, Nick. I'm so sorry. I beg your pardon. That was my fault. Mary, could you answer that fairly succinctly? What were you searching for when you there joined? There are several reasons why people join. People join because maybe stupid, they're, sorry, they're man. idealists. They're looking for something, whether it be spiritual or whether it be on an intellectual level. Maybe they've gone through a trauma. Mm -hmm. um, they're thinkers. They're romantics. They're, you join? Yeah, I joined because I would be intelligent and I'm very interested in the way the mind works and because I wanted to improve myself. And this was presented to me as a science that worked. And that's why I joined. Okay, could, could I, could I, I'll give you, I'll give you two minutes, uh, Peter, to summarize what you've heard and, and answer what you've heard tonight in the program. Okay. So far, you probably feel that you've been bashed to death or something. Oh, no, today. it's been, it's been enjoyable. You, First of all, the general... You've heard it all before, Peter. I've heard, it, heard it all before. before yes. There's a few really key things to keep in mind. Um, you know, religion is a controversial subject, and I can understand, you know, the gentleman saying that from this discussion, this is what he has gathered. Well, whether that's what you've gathered or not, whether at the end of this you feel you understand Scientology or you don't understand Scientology, and I, I really don't think you, sh you will, but I think it's really important that we keep in mind that we live in a world where people are free to make their own choices. Tony wants to be a Scientologist. This whole thing with the Phelan family could end tonight. You know, right here, this, this program could actually achieve something if Tony and PJ and John and the others said, you know, we're brothers, let's just be brothers, and you do what you want to do, I d I'll do what I want to do, and we won't like uh, pressure each other, won't control each other. John, John, and P, John and PJ, for whatever reason, cannot tolerate Tony making his own choice about his own religion. If they just let him be, no, it would they, absolutely be the end of it. It must be clear they believe that he is not making his own choice. Well, they believe so that. They believe that. But the other thing you have to take into account is, as I said, they have got tremendous amounts of information from this yes, lady. I mean, right, you might think it's funny. Yes, okay. But all right. They've both been invited. You know, why don't you come and visit the Church of Scientology? Come and have a look at things. Come and talk. Come and meet. Discuss. They refuse. Okay. All Sorry. right. There we have to leave you. Thank you very much indeed, all of the contributors to tonight's program. And I presume and I hope that it sheds some light on the difficulties that people are having to